run. Hey there, fifth, sixth period algebra. It's Mr. Polarski here. I am in school today. I'm not absent. I have to go to a training today during fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth period, so I have a substitute. I do expect you to behave for the substitute as you would behave for me. The sub has been given my cell phone number and instructed to call either my cell phone or the library if there's any misbehavior that needs to be dealt with now. Please take a few minutes to copy down the lesson, title, objectives, and Pennsylvania assessment anchors into your notebooks. If you need to, please pause the video. Here we can see the definition of slope, uh, the slope M. The slope is represented by the letter M. In fact, it's the lowercase m. Is the ratio or fraction of the change in the y coordinates to the corresponding change in the x coordinates. What we're going to concern ourselves with is M is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. That's the slope formula. What we have here is something that we looked about in chapter 5. The change in y over the change in x's. We used that and found that from a table and used that to find the equation of a line from a table. This right here may be unfamiliar to you, but all it is is another way to write the change in y over the change in x. This is actually not a triangle, but the Greek letter delta, which is shorthand for a change in. So instead of writing the words change in, we could write delta and just say change in y over the change in x. But the slope formula that we need to concern ourselves with is this here. m is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now this is a formula that's given to you both on your foresight exam and on your PSSA exam and when you take the exam at the end of chapter 6 you will also have it. If we take a look at this example here this is from chapter 5 lesson 6 where we're being asked to write an equation for the following relation. Uh, what we did is we found the change in y values and made a fraction out of it by putting it over the change in x values. Now that should look familiar to you from the previous example. The change in the x values as we go from one x value to the next value is an increase of 1. The change in the y values is an increase of 2. Another way to say that would be the difference or the change in y values or the difference in the y values, consecutive y values, is positive 2. So back in chapter 5, we would have written the fraction 2 over 1 and said that that simplified to the whole number 2. Then we asked ourselves, uh, to, we actually then formed the equation y is equal to 2x and asked ourselves, does y equal to 2 times x and we tested that for each pair and in this particular case it does so the equation would be y is equal to 2 times x now let's take a look at these points on a graph here's the same table the same pairs of numbers and let's take a look at it and how this relates to the graph now to go from this point negative 4 negative 2 we have to travel up to and then to the right, 1. To go from this new point to the next point, we have to travel up 2 and to the right, 1. To go from that point, 0, 0, to the next point on the line, or in the relation, we go up 2 and to the right, 1. And to go from the point 1, 2, we go up 2 and to the right, 1. And as you can see, we form some steps here. And each time the change in the y's is 2. We go up 2 and the change in the x is 1. We go to the right 1. We go up 2 to the right 1. Up 2 to the right 1. Up 2 to the right 1. So in this particular case, the slope of this line is represented by the change in y over the change in x. 
which as we already determined is 2 over 1, or it simplifies to the whole number 2. The slope formula gives us the relationship between the change in the y direction, up or down, over the change in the x direction, and we can use this formula to find the slope between any two points on the coordinate plane. Let's take a look how to do that. You're being told to find the slope of a line that passes through the points 1, negative 2 and negative 3, 6. Until you become very comfortable with this, I'm going to suggest that you write down the slope formula, which is m is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1, all divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Now a trick that I was taught when I was in ninth grade learning slope was this, to label the points x sub 1 and y sub 1 and then x sub 2 and y sub 2. That makes using this slope formula very easy. When we substitute the values in, we go y sub 2 minus y sub 1, so that'll give us 6 take away negative 2. Little mistake there, let's fix it. 6 take away negative 2. All over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, which would be negative 3 take away 1. Now at this point you could use your calculator to do this arithmetic. I don't need a calculator. 6 take away a negative 2 gives me 8. And negative 3 take away negative 1 gives me negative 4. Now this fraction 8 over negative 4 does simplify to negative 2. So the slope between these two lines is negative 2. And, or is negative two. Now let's see how that relates to a graph. The points we were working with were 1, negative 2. So we're going to take this, one of our points that I have over here, to the right one, down to 1, negative 2, and the other point was negative 3, 6. So I'm going to take that and graph it negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and draw a line through it because what we're working with here are linear equations or equations that form straight lines. Now we already know that the slope of this line from our calculation is negative 2, sorry, down 2 to the right 1. But if we go from this point here down and then uh, from this point where we go down over to this point and we count it off, we go down 8, which would be represented by a negative 8. And we have to go to the right 4. The change in y is negative 8. And the change in x is equal to 4. And that's the same value we had before, negative 8 over gives us negative 2. So you can see you can calculate the slope by either using the slope formula or using a graph. Now what that means the slope is negative 2 and this actually would reduce to the fraction negative 2 over positive 1 which means we would go from one point on the line to the next point by going down 2 and to the right 1 and that would give us what's a called a good point and from that good point we go down 2 and to the right 1 and that gives us the next point we go down 2 to the right 1, and that gives us the next point. Down 2 and to the right 1, the next point, and so on and so forth. We continue going down 2 and to the right 1, and that will help us identify every good point on the line. 